Andrew Proctor. I'm the executive director of Literary Arts. I'm here with Greg Mortensen. It's a great honor to have you here. Hey, yeah, We're backstage at, at the Arlene Stitzer Concert Hall, right before Greg's due to go on um, and speak in front of about 2,800 people. So we're really excited. And, um, so I've got some, some good time with the students today. That's right. We're at Wilson High School. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, they were a great bunch of kids. So that was really fun too. Um, so I've got some questions that uh, listeners uh, submitted. To I think through the Facebook page or um, other ways, and I thought we'd, we'd just sort of ask you then and sure. let us know what you think. Um, one question from the listeners, um, how are the schools that you helped fare in given the conflict in the area? Well, Andrew, uh, we're very fortunate that none of our schools have been shut down or bombed or destroyed. We have had just one school attacked out of our 200 schools. Um, when we set up a school, we provide the skilled labor and the materials, and most importantly, the teacher training support but the community has to provide free land, free resources, free wood, and then free manual labor, two to 5,000 days of free manual labor. And what that does is it ensures a local buy-in. Um, several other organizations do the same thing, and very few of our schools are being attacked. Whereas the 1,000-plus schools that have been shut down or burned or bombed or destroyed, most of those are set up by outside contractors. Nobody knows who got the money. There was absolutely no community involvement, and really that's the key. Wow. Wow, okay, so it's the community that's really protecting community. you. Yeah. Um, how do you protect yourself when you're in Afghanistan? <laughs> well, I'm winging a prayer or something like that, but I, um, in the, the Pashto people, the tribal area, there's a word that is Nenawati, which means the right of refuge. And when you, when you become part of their family, meaning that you've already been a guest and a stranger, um, they're willing to do anything to protect you. I also have to get permission to come into a, a new area, like a, a clan, and so often when I'm traveling I wait. We come to the impasse between two clans, um, we sit there sometimes for hours until a horseman or a jeep comes over, and then I'm passed on, even though these two clans are feuding and, uh, you know, they're killing each other, but they're willing, they give me the right of passage, but it takes uh, many years to develop those relationships. Wow. Um, and that, that segues nicely to how do tribal values and politics affect um, what you're able to do and where you're able to build? And I guess some of that you've answered a little bit. In that, in that well, that's, Andrew, that's an excellent question and insight. Um, the Afghanistan in 2001 was set up as a centralized system. The, the U.S. and 18 countries tried to establish somewhat Western type of democracy. However, the people there are under the tribal tradition, and this is where the elders and the shura kind of run the country, and um, we really haven't involved them in the decision-making process, and, and uh, only recently has that really started changing around, and it's imperative that we build relationships. Also, we work with the elders, and, and there's there's a lot to be said about the respect for elders and working with the, the tribal elders if you really want to. If we really want to help them, we have to start working with the elders and the communities. Right. And so, are there parallels that you've learned that could help us prove education here in the United States? Well, the, the biggest thing I see, and even here in Portland, I think you're, the uh, number of kids who, who graduate from high school is about 64%, I believe, and um, which is par na nationwide. It's actually under a little bit. In Montana, we have the same problem where I'm from. Um, the, the key I see is community involvement, uh, parents getting involved. Um, in our schools, the kids don't have any other distraction. I mean, they have to work sometimes, but there's no video, no television, no nothing else. And so they, they soak up the education. But the communities are, in so many reasons, they're willing to do anything. Um, they will make great sacrifices to send their child to school. And um, having, my, my kids are in public education, and I, I'm trying to help our own schools in Montana, and very difficult. And, and I see a lot of it is um, there, there needs to be, parents really have to get involved in our communities and we have to support education. Right. Uh, Mandela said, Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon or, or tool that we have in the world today and I really believe that. Wow, that's great. Well, thank you very much. Again, awesome. um, this awesome. is Greg Mortensen, I'm Andrew Proctor. We're at the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall and Greg's been about to go on stage in a few moments. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you very much. It's so great to be here in Portland. Yeah, we're delighted to have you. It's a great honor.